Hello and welcome back to chapter 4. Today we're going to look at section 4.5 and that deals with graphs of sine and cosine functions. Now the project that we've been working on the last two days in class actually is a good lead into this section here and you'll see why in just a few moments. When we look at the graphs of sine and cosine functions, uh, the graph of a sine function is a sine curve and from your project, I'm hoping that you were able to see that you were able to get something that looks like this. And we ran out of time um, to do the cosine function, but had we spent another two days on it, you would have noticed that a cosine function has similar properties, however, it looks like this. And as we've mentioned before, cosine actually deals with our x values, while sine actually deals with our y values. That's where, that's why the two graphs are similar, but... Um, different at the same time. Now when we go to sketch our sine and cosine functions, you need to make sure that you include key points. And our key points, and we can even write this off to the side here, so key points are going to be max and mins, and any intercepts that you have, whether they be x or y intercepts, and any other critical behavior that you happen to notice. Um, when we get to the section that deals with tangents, you'll see that there are going to be asymptotes that you'll also have to include. So if you would on your own, just take a quick second to pause the video, look at both of these graphs, and I'd like you to kind of notice that you have kind of some key things happening at the same intervals between the sine and cosine functions, and that also you have peaks and valleys, maxes and mins are the same for both, um, min and maxes are going to be zero, or I'm sorry, negative one and one on both graphs for your y values. Your domain is going to be all real numbers for both. Um, the only difference, and maybe we should write this down, so we have domain for the sine is going to be all real numbers, and domain for cosine will be all real numbers. We said our range was going to be from negative one to one. Remember, range is our y values. And then the only difference really then is our symmetry. And our symmetry is going to be with respect to the origin for sine. So our origin. So this all of the shorthand stuff here means symmetry with respect to the origin. And then our symmetry for our cosine function is going to be with respect to the y axis. So really our symmetry is the major difference between these two graphs. And I guess one other thing I would like to point out, and we're at, this is actually a, a discussion for another section later on um, this year, but if you actually take your cosine graph and shift it over to pi over 2, um, you'll actually have a sine function itself. So if you take this whole graph from 0 to 2 pi, and you shift everything over in, let's say, to the right, it truly doesn't matter, but in this case, let's shift it over to the right, pi over 2 units, you, and everything along this line shifted over pi over 2 units, you should notice that you're going to end up with this part of your sine curve. So keep that in mind when we come to talk about this here in a couple sections. Now, when we are graphing sine and cosine functions, we have two generic formulas for the equations. Um, we're going to use y equals d plus a times the sine of the quantity of bx minus c, or we have y equals d plus a times the cosine of bx minus c. And here over the course of the next couple of slides, we're going to see what each variable actually means. So let's start out by looking at a. a is what we call our scaling factor. If you take the absolute value of a and it's greater than 1, then we're going to end up with a vertical shrink of our standard sine or cosine function. If the absolute value of a is less than 1, then we're going to end up with a vertical shrink. Now, we already talked about how our graph um, kind of currently goes between positive 1 and negative 1 for a standard sine or cosine graph. Now, based on a right here, if a is anything other than a 1, then we're actually going to be going back and forth between a negative a and a positive a, and that ultimately comes down to the fact um, because a is what we call our amplitude. And amplitude, remember, is kind of the height of your graph. 
The next thing we're going to look at is the variable b. Um, we can actually use the variable b to calculate the period or how often um, our graph is going to repeat itself. And to calculate the period, you're going to take 2 pi and you're going to divide it by that b value. Now b is the coefficient of x here. If b is between 0 and 1, our graph is going to witness a horizontal stretch. And if b is greater than 1, then we're going to get a horizontal shrink. Now, kind of a neat thing that we can do is we can take our period, divide it by 4, and obtain all of our critical points or um, critical numbers that occur on our graph. And we're going to do an example with this, so I'll show you how to do that here in just a second. So for example 1, we're going to sketch the graph of y equals cosine of x divided by 2. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to identify a few key pieces. Now our a value, remember, is the number that comes before the actual cosine stuff itself. And in this case, there is nothing, so I know that a is equal to 1. And because a is equal to 1, we have no stretch or shrink. So we know that we're going to be bouncing back and forth between a positive and negative 1 on the y-axis. Now, let's go and calculate the period. The period, we know, could be found by taking 2 pi and dividing it by b. Well, in this case, I really have 2 pi divided by b is actually going to come from right here, and I can rewrite that as 1 half times x, so b is really going to be 1 half. Now, please don't be quick to jump to the conclusion that 2 divided by 1 half is 1, because 2 divided by half is really 4. So the period, then, is really 4 pi. Now, I also mentioned to you that we could find critical numbers or critical points. So I'm going to say CP for critical points is going to be found by taking our period of 4 pi and dividing that by 4. And this is going to give me um, pi, which, let me fix that. So, for every increment of pi, we're going to have a critical point. So that means that we're going to have 0, pi, 2 pi, 3 pi, and 4 pi. And this is going to create one whole period. So now, I'm going to graph this, and I see, let's see, I'm going to go, um, here's pi, 2 pi, 3 pi, 4 pi, and I'm going to go back and forth between 1 and negative 1 because that's my amplitude. So I'm going to go increments, we'll say every 4 will be a 1. So this down here is a negative 1. So when I go to evaluate my function, at 0, the cosine of 0 divided by 2 is 0, so cosine of 0 is going to give me 1. So that tells me I'm going to start out up here. I have a critical number at pi, so if I plug pi in for x right here, pi over 2, cosine of pi over 2, I hope you're memorizing your unit circle, is going to give me 0. Then if I plug a 2 pi in, 2 pi divided by 2, is going to give me pi. The cosine of pi is a negative 1. So I'm going to come down here. If I plug a 3 pi in for x, I have the cosine of 3, over, 3 pi over 2, which will give me 0. And if I plug 4 pi in, I have 4 pi divided by 2, which is going to give me the cosine of 2 pi, which is also going to give me 1. So I'm going to end up with something like this, and if I now go and connect my points, you'll see that we end up with a graph that looks like that. Now some more information that comes from our standard um, equations is the bx minus c piece right here actually will give us a horizontal translation. If it's a plus, remember we're going to shift to the left. If it's a minus, then we're really going to shift to the right. Uh, if we want to find our endpoints, then we're going to set the bx minus c equal to 0 and 2 pi and solve for x. 
And our, uh, the last thing we're going to look at then are our vertical shifts. And our vertical shifts are actually going to come from the D value. So the D, if D is greater than 0, we're going to move. I'm sorry, if D is less than 0, we're going to move down. If D is greater than 0, we're going to move up. And if D equals 0, that just tells us that we're going to be oscillating. So for part or example 2, we're going to sketch the graph of Y equals 2 times the sine of the quantity of X minus X over 2, pi over 2, sorry. This should be pi over 2. So again, we're going to go ahead and identify our amplitude. And our amplitude comes from this right here. So my amplitude is 2. The period is going to be found by taking 2 pi and dividing it by b. Well, in this case, our b value is really 1. So our period is 2 pi. We can then calculate our critical points based on that. So I have 2 pi divided by 4, which is really equal to pi over 2. So this tells me that my critical points are going to be 0, pi over 2, pi, 3 pi over 2, and 2 pi. I can find my endpoints. We said by taking the stuff in parentheses there and setting it equal to 0 and 2 pi. So if I go x minus pi over 2 and set that equal to 0, I get x equals pi over 2, and if I get x minus pi over 2 and I set it equal to 2 pi, then I end up with x equals 2 pi minus pi over 2, I'm sorry, plus pi over 2 actually gives me 5 pi over 2. So those are going to be the endpoints of my graph. And now if I go ahead and plot my points and I plug in 0, uh, for my x, I'm going to end up with 0 minus pi over 2. Well, that's a negative pi over 2. Sine of a negative pi over 2 is negative 1 times 2 gives me a negative 2. So I'm going to start out right here. If I plug in a pi over 2, which has a critical point, um, so I took care of that one. Now I'm going to plug in pi over 2. Pi over 2 minus pi over 2 is 0. The sine of 0 is 0 times 2 is still 0. If I plug a pi in, pi minus pi over 2 is pi over 2. Sine of pi over 2 is 1 times 2 is 2. So I'm going to come up to pi and go up here, and this will be 2. If I plug a 3 pi over 2 in, subtract a pi over 2, I end up with pi. Sine of pi is 0. And I'm going to do the same thing with 2 pi. I plug in 2 pi. 2 pi minus pi over 2 is 3 pi over 2. The sine of 3 pi over 2 is a negative 1 times 2 will give me a negative 2. So my graph then will look something like this when I connect it. And I could continue on. But for uh, graphing purposes right now, I'm just going to go from 0. I'm going to go at least one period, which 0 to 2 pi in this case is one period. And our last example says to sketch the graph of y equals 2 times the cosine of x minus 5. Now one thing I want to caution you on before we go any farther. This right here, this x and minus 5, this is not in parentheses. So it's not the cosine of the quantity of x minus 5. It's the cosine of x, period, and then minus 5. So this negative 5 is really going to be a shift in the downward direction. I see we have an amplitude of 2. So let's go ahead and write this down. We knew that we have an amplitude of 2 based on this. We can go ahead and calculate the period. The period is going to be 2 pi divided by the coefficient of x, which in this case is 1, which is really 2 pi. And this tells us then that our critical numbers are going to be 2 pi divided by 4 which again is going to be just like the previous example where we have 0, pi over 2, pi, 3 pi over 2, 
into pi. So now, when we go ahead and start plugging in critical numbers, if I plug in 0 for x, I have the cosine of 0 is 1, times 2 is 2, and 2 minus 5 is a negative 3. So at 0, I'm going to end up with a negative 3, which is right here. Then at pi over 2, cosine of pi over 2 is 0 times 2 is still 0. 0 minus 5 is a negative 5. So I'm going to come down here. When I get to pi, the cosine of pi is a negative 1 times 2 is a negative 2 minus 5 is a negative 7. So I'm going to be right here. At 3 pi over 2, I'm going to have a cosine of 3 pi over 2 is 0 times 2 is still 0. 0 minus 5 is a negative 5. So I'm going to end up swinging back this way. And the cosine of 2 pi is 1 times 2 is 2. And 2 minus 5 is a negative 3. So we're going to be right back to here. And if I connect these, then we'll see that we end up with something that looks like this. And we know that we're going to probably start going down. I'm going to guess it's going to look something like that. But you don't have to continue on. I mean, you can do as much or as little. Sometimes you are told that you have to graph from a negative 2 pi to a positive 2 pi. But in this case, we're not given that. So if you just do one period, that is fine. And at this point in time, we are going to conclude section 4.5. And I will see you guys all in class. And I hope you enjoy the rest of your weekend.